Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the air tasking order. Now on this video comes as a request, it just takes a few videos, a couple of weeks in order to kind of get to it, but I thought this would be a good time to kind of review sort of operations management sort of in general. So today we have a pretty straightforward scenario, uh, you know, the evil North Connecticut here is uh, decide to secede from the rest of the Union, and the combined Naval and Air Forces uh, decide to kind of step in and uh, show them where it's at kind of a thing. So what I've done before I got the video rolling here is I got all of my stuff set up here, and there's a lot. This is a, what I would consider to be probably a moderate complexity scenario here. So our target region, of course, is our lovely um, Hartfordistan. Hartfordistan, there we go. Uh, down here, protected by, you know, some classic Cold War goodness here. We have a Midway Carrier Battle Group down here in the bottom, and of course, uh, we have the Nova Scotia Tactical Air Base up here to kind of help us out just a little bit here. What I've done is I've created a bunch of zones and I've color-coordinated everything here, uh, just kind of using the best of all the different skills that I know here, sort of integrating all this. I really should have named all these. If I were a better planner, I would, but I'm, again, this is just for a quick video kind of a thing. We also have a lot of Air Force units at our disposal. As a matter of fact, there were so many of them that when I had to create my missions, I actually created two task pools and then filled them up with packages in here in order to basically kind of organize everything. Now, there's two big kind of thrusts as far as packages goes. There's the Air Force, which should be there about 1400 Zulu, and of course, the Navy will be getting there at about 12 o'clock Zulu. Now, keep in mind, these have all been broken down by, you know, air support. They've been broken down by, you know, seed, cap, all those other kinds of things. And they've made themselves a big old mess, kind of a big deal here. So I'm going to quickly save my scenario, and I'm going to bring up the air tasking order now. Now, what you're going to notice here is that there's nothing here. By the way, uh, when you first open this sucker, you might get something that looks a little bit like this. There actually is stuff over here. So uh, one of the things you probably want to do is grab that sucker and make it big enough. What you will observe is there's nothing here. Now, the reason there's nothing here is because of the fact that nothing has been generated because I am still paused. I did all of this before the scenario actually started today. Now, the reason I did that, of course, is just to make it a little bit simpler. Now, there's a cool thing here is that remember how I did everything as far as task packages, task pulls rather? You'll notice that they're all kind of broken apart here to make my life much, much, much simpler here. And you will see what happens, of course, when things get generated. So let me go ahead and pause. Uh, unpause, I should say. Give it a few moments here. It's a lovely day, a very, very nice, crisp, cold, you know, 1968 August day. <laughs> now, if we open up the air tasking order one more time, you'll see that things got busy. Uh, just a quick little word of warning here is uh, when you are working with this, the clock is still ticking. So you probably want to make sure you weigh up to the top. Push that little triangle there before you get carried away. Now, there are so much... Uh, so much. I wish I used the correct term here. So many different items that you can see here that uh, basically have appeared. Uh, the key thing, of course, is uh, we want to go ahead and read through these. So this is going to be a mission or packages. Uh, we're using all packages here today. Uh, you do not have to use packages for them to show up in the air tasking order. There is no consequence to that. Uh, to the right of that, of course, is going to be our flight call sign. Uh, these are really, really cool. Uh, we can come in here any point, of course, and we'll get to the scary point in a second. I don't want to push this button and you'll see why in a minute. Uh, we have our flight plan, which is a, basically the type. Everything's going to be type flight plan. There's no other options at this time. It's going to give us our status. Uh, one thing you need to know about status here is status is going to list this taking off, even though the takeoff time could be actually relatively late. Now, the interesting thing we don't see here is the takeoff time. If you recall, many of these missions are actually quite a bit later in the day, so you're not going to see those. You're going to notice this item called task. Now, this is an interesting little thing. This task here basically refers to what the point of the mission is supposed to be. Now, one of the things you're going to notice here is this little task arrow actually allows you to change what the particular mission is. Now remember, all these were missions that we generated for the purposes of this exercise. So coming in here, you'll notice there's a lot of things that you probably haven't seen before. Uh, for one example, you have your tar caps, you have your bar caps, you have your rest caps. There's a lot of different types of items in here that you've probably never seen before. Now I know you're sitting here going, well, isn't that going to have some kind of um, you know impact as far as what happens in the game? And as a general rule, it's not going to have a large impact. Uh, some of these have slightly different flight profiles, but it's not going to make that big of a difference. Trying to get in here and explain what all these is, it would be an exercise in, ah, the most important thing you have to remember with all of this is this is for you. This is not for the AI. So for example here, I happen to notice that my combat air patrol is a uh, Voodoo 1, my, uh, my 2s here. I can actually come in here and set these to be tar cap. Now the reason that's helpful for me is going forward is I'm going, oh yeah, these guys are going to be the tar cap, kind of a thing like that. And I can set that here to act as a reference to me to let me know the fact that we're dealing with a tar cap. Now the interesting thing here is there's no deed, and I kind of wish there was, of course, deed, dead, kind of a thing like that. And there are things in there for like drones 
and fun things like that, but I usually never mess with those. The other thing you'll notice coming down here with all of our support folks, you'll notice surveillance and support is separated automatically. Our surveillance, of course, now you'll notice that our F105Ds are set to surveillance. Uh, these folks are not surveillance at all. And in a minute, this will update itself to actually represent it. We're on all these folks down here, all going to be set, of course, to support. Now, one of the cool things here is I'll go ahead and I'll kind of move from the left to right here. Keep in mind, this information will constantly be dynamically updated unless you've changed something. To the right, of course, we have aircraft type. Uh, notice here that uh, if we double click this, this does not bring up the database page. Kind of wish it did. Uh, it doesn't do that yet. Uh, some point, of course, uh, you know, Uncle Demetrius has got to see it and go, oh, that sounds cool. I'll go tell the guy who does that for us. To the right, of course, this is going to give us our loadout types. Uh, we're going to have our takeoff times. Remember, none of this has been generated yet. But there's one really, really cool thing here. And if you actually come over here, you're going to notice there's this landing location item, which is really cool because uh, this would basically allow us to tweak it once we get some stuff getting into the air here. But keep in mind, uh, nothing has gotten in the air. Now, there's other stuff we have the ability to do too, which is really wild. Um, this is a large list box, which means if we want to be that way, I can actually organize things by alphabetical if I choose to do so. I can order them by my takeoff location. Like I can see exactly where they're coming from. Keep in mind, if I'm running like the Cold War here, there, <laughs> there'd be 600 of these. So this makes it really, really easy. You can also organize by type of aircraft and all those different items to make your life much, much simpler as far as keeping this all organized. I'm a big fan of uh, doing it by takeoff time. That's just me. Obviously, we have no takeoff times because nobody's there yet. Uh, we still have an hour before anybody starts getting in the air, so I don't have to worry about that yet. Now, one cool thing here is uh, we can go ahead and play with this. So uh, we can change what time of day it is. We can even switch to just Air Force. And I can see, for example, I've got some Air Force folks who are getting ready if I switch to Navy here. Remember, all we did here is create ourselves task pools for the purposes of us staying organized. Because <laughs> if you're doing, uh, for example, one of my scenarios, which is, uh, let's see here, Operation Allied Force, you'll have like down to here in packages. It's it's insanity. But again, that's one of the cool things here is we can go and open individual ones if we need to, which again, like I always tell people, try to stay organized. So I'm gonna go ahead and unpause here. I'm gonna go ahead and speed up time a little bit. And, and I heard the happy sounds of a helicopter's launching. I'm gonna turn my own volume down here so I don't deafen myself. <laughs> and of course, uh, these guys are now in the air. Let's go ahead and pause and let's go bring up the air tasking order uh, one more time here. It's gonna take a second. It's gonna start getting a little messy. So what we're going to notice now is if I come down to package 7538, so 7538, you're going to notice now that things have changed. Uh, you'll first, of course, observe the fact they're no longer going to be in the taking off position. You're going to see they're in the airborne position. You can see they're currently on their current task, as well as the different aircraft. And again, we don't have any local takeoff times or time on targets or anything like that. And you're probably panicking saying, what, 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 but, but they're missions, why aren't they? I'll show you why. When I created these missions today, because of the scale of the scenario, I created scenarios that are only patrols. Now, the reason that's a big deal is because of the fact that when I do patrols, there really is a time on station. There's not a time on target, which is going to change the way that, of course, our uh, different scenario goes. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll run the clock just a tiny bit here, and I'll kind of uh, generate a bunch of shenanigans and goings on. So I'm just going <laughs> to... I know they're all bad guys. I set the scenario up myself. So, you know, of course, if we go back up to the air tasking order, um, things are going to get a little busy. So if I were to go over to all missions, including in the ATO, including those not in the ATO. Now, there's one interesting thing about the ATO. Now, if I press the F11 key and I pick one of these packages, uh, one of the things you're going to know is that you can actually decide whether or not this is part of the air tasking order. Now, if we want to set that up, we can. Uh, it's a general rule. I don't really know why you wouldn't set it up that way. But again, depending on how you want to set those things up, you can. It's just kind of one of those neat little features. So now that we've got ourselves in the air and now things are starting to get a little shenanigans and goings on here, you can see we've got people taking off. We have people airborne. Uh, all sorts of stuff is starting to flood into here to kind of keep everything all sorts of busy. Now, one of the things I love is you can switch to status mode here and you can quickly take a look at all the different types that are airborne. Now, if you remember a little while ago, we set these chaps to be a tar cap and they actually are tar cap here, which is gonna work well for us. But what I'd like to do now is I'd like to go ahead and I grab my uh, Nova Scotia tab real quickly. I'm just gonna control F6 here. And what I'd like to do just briefly is I just demonstrate what it's going to look like when you have a mission that is actually going to have a specific time where it needs to blow stuff up. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my P-52Ds here. Go, <laughs> oh, that'll do it. <laughs> That'd be kind of rude. <laughs> oh man, I feel sorry for this city. I've dropped so many bombs on it over the years. I probably should uh, reel that in a little bit. So strike this. So I'll go ahead and keep it nice and simple. We'll do a land strike. Uh, let's see what time is it. It is 5.40. Actually, it's 10.41. So we can get there for 12.30 is probably going to be the dumb time of when we hit it. So I'm going to go ahead and press OK. 
Nice, so now we've got everything. Notice uh, we've got everything ready to go here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and set a time on target and we're gonna do uh, 12, what do I say, 12.31? Uh, let's see, 10, yeah, we'll call it 12.30 will be our strike time. Yeah, that sounds pretty good to me. Deactivation time, I'm not going to do any of these things because I don't need to. If I wanted to, I could technically come in here and say shut the mission off at X, Y, and Z time. But I've already got a time on target, so I don't have to worry about that too much. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my buffs. I'll go ahead and drop them in there. That looks fine to me. That looks fine to me. There's no escorts. I'm not worried about it. Um, targets, oh yeah, like I want to target those. Oh boy. By the way, if you're curious about how you can customize which one of these targets should be your priorities, um, that's going to be a different screen than this in the old days of course you could actually come up here and press a like, control up arrow and stuff like that and like move them around we don't do that anymore uh, there's better opportunities uh focusing on strike targets we definitely want that to be something like that all this stuff here mcon um i want this to be going blasting the whole time to give us some sort of chance to get a little bit closer to the enemy without getting hosed there and uh let's go ahead and take a look real quickly here targeting priority i'm not going to set any of this today but i could set it like medium buildings or something like that if i want to specifically target them but the reason i did that of course is i wanted to demonstrate what will happen here so let me go speed up time just a little bit and let's go grab our air task in order one more time here. Now, this is where it's going to be different. So I'm going to go grab strike this. And uh, you'll notice we don't have a takeoff time yet uh, because we're not quite there. Uh, if I go to my Nova Scotia tab, let's see, press F11 real quickly here. You'll see my time on target is until 1230. Now, if I wanted to, and uh, this is a big deal, um, we can go ahead and, by the way, this is a quick thing. If you press this button, it pops out. Of, ah, now we have a takeoff time. You're going to notice here that some things have changed in our tasking order. Uh, one thing you'll see here, for example, is the fact that we have a new status called planning. Uh, when we're on patrol, it's a little different. You'll also notice my task is the same as it was before. Uh, you'll notice the fact my loadout is here. You'll see that I have a takeoff time and I have a time on target. One of these must be set. Uh, the other one does not. So, for example, you'll see that my takeoff time is set to be 6.58 a.m. local time. And now what I can actually do is I can change that time over in the screen and it will automatically adjust itself here. Now, if I wanted to unlock that, I could unlock that, which would now make it in a situation where I could go ahead and modify it over in the mission editor. You know, if I go like this and double click, you'll notice there's nothing I can click here. But keep in mind, this is all supposed to be information for us minus other places where the little drop down boxes are. Now, if of course, you'll notice when I hit the little button here, flight plan and flight plan template, it gives us the ability to dial one of these in. I'm not going to punch this in because that's going to like blow up everything that it did already. Swinging down to this side, you're going to notice something new. And there's this lovely thing called priority. Uh, this is really for our good old-fashioned, uh, you know, real military planner types. There are two. There is either it's got to happen or none. So what some people will do is build a lot of plans, and they'll actually come back and actually have some fun on it, which is actually kind of neat. But again, it all depends on what you want to do. Now, another thing you'll see here, too, is we have the ability to show airborne flight plans on tactical map for the selected units. Now, the reason this is cool, and uh, I don't know if I can give myself enough room to actually show this to you, is you can actually now see see the flight plan for this particular operation that's going. Uh, the other thing I'll observe too is when you come down to the bottom is there's going to be this whole section where it's going to give you the ability to create, edit, and delete, and changing aircraft types, takeoff times, all of these items are actually built directly into the bottom. Now, we have not launched yet. It uh, says 6.58 a.m. It says uh, this is uh, it's 5.42, so we have an hour and a half before these things are actually going to launch. But the reason this is so cool now is if I wanted to create I could actually come in here and I could go ahead and create a flight independent of the actual units themselves. Now, this is an interesting little piece here because uh, I could build all of this myself completely within my uh, package here. Notice, by the way, I've got a new call sign here. It's all part of that mission package. Generate everything. And then afterwards, you could come in here and you could actually assign the aircraft that you wanted to use here. Now, this is where things are going to get incredibly complicated. Let me show you why. Because if I were to go back over into here and I were to go ahead and edit this flight plan, you would recognize the traditional sort of a little piece here. Oh, the difference being, of course, is that when we're in our creator flight mode, you probably observe the fact that we had all that other stuff there. So watch this. I'm actually going to go and I'll delete this one. Oh, we don't need this one real quick. I'm going to press uh, change aircraft type and loadout. I'm going to leave it as my B-52. Remove existing. Are you, do you want to proceed? No. Uh, notice we've got these all selected. Notice we have the weapons. 
But notice now we have this brand new profile option over here on the right. Now, the reason this is so cool is this gives us the ability to not only uh, tweak the profile manually for the mission, but it also lets us do things like changing the landing location. We had another airbase. We could actually come in here and change the landing location to a different airbase if we were doing like a kind of clean sweep. Obviously, we don't have carrier capable B-52s here, so I'm not going to worry about that. I noticed, by the way, there's a cruise one way only, which I find kind of amusing. Another thing you got to watch out for with the screen is everything's going to be in meters. Uh, we have to kind of be mindful of that. But uh, one of the cool things is that if I want to do my attack ingress, I could actually go ahead and uh, set this manually if I wanted to be a silly person. And again, I would have to set the plane, then I'd have to set this, then I'd have to set that and do all that over again to basically get this all configured. So I'm not going to change that because uh, once you start getting into flight pan territory, that's where you're going to start getting into things getting complicated. But again, I'll pull this out real quickly to kind of show it to you what it looks like. You can see how this will get a little involved very quickly, but this is honestly for another day because that gets very, like I said, involved. And the incredible thing is there's all sorts of crazy buttons and stuff down there, which makes things very, very interesting for us. And we have talked about the flight plan editor before. So let's go ahead and uh, get some time going here. Uh, we'll let our aircraft uh, kind of get airborne. I have a pretty powerful computer, but uh, these things slow down sometimes. I'm pretty sure they're bad guys. <laughs> I'm sure the people of Hartford are very confused why the Air Force chose to do an exercise directly over their heads. Now, notice how um, I'm going to go ahead and pause here. Good. Let's so bring up the air tasking order once more. Now that we've had an opportunity to run things, I'll uh, we'll get out of this package. We'll go to all oh, ready for pain. Ow. And you can see here that um, everything, we've got people airborne, we have people um, landing, we've got all sorts of stuff going here. Of course, my strike plan down over on this side, uh, these folks are still getting ready for takeoff, but you can see their takeoff time is 6.58. That's uh, 52 minutes from now, so we have plenty of time. And notice my Air Force guys arrive right on schedule, my uh, F-105Ds, which are a fantastic airplane. And uh, they're just doing their exercise, definitely doing some military exercises. And I promise you that... Um, <laughs> <laughs> They're probably not terribly thrilled about this. All right, we can see a uh, 658. Uh, I'm just waiting for that to come roll around. And of course, look at everybody running over to the refueling. I need gas, man. Give me gas. Now, of course, uh, that's one of the reasons why. You can say, oh, look at all these missiles. <laughs> Every once in a while, the radar comes back online for a second, and then it gets like just slammed by standard missiles. Like, part of me feels bad about that. The other part of me is like, the only reason I feel bad about that is how expensive those darn things were. You know, let's take a rim Talos and uh, just put an anti-radar missile thing on it. All right, let's go ahead and bring up the air tasking order one more time here. And I believe at this point, if I go over to my um, strike this plan, uh, these guys are airborne and uh, they're on the way. And you can see their takeoff time was uh, basically 13 seconds after 58, which is exactly correct, which is why I tell everybody to do things with takeoff times. And they are on their way, uh, which is awesome. We'll go pick up with them in a minute here uh, once we get uh, things a little bit more stabilized there. Ah, what a lovely day. It's a lovely day. And there are our friends right there. Now, let's see here. This is our B-52s. They're well on the plan, just like we expected. I think our attack point there was supposed to be, let's see, they're supposed to strike at 7.30. So uh, they're right on schedule. These guys are doing a great job of it today. Now, it, takes them, uh, it shouldn't take them too long. It shouldn't take them too long. So let's go pop up with the air tasking order one more time real quickly. And again, you can always go back to the flight plan. And I love the fact you can come in here and actually click on this and like change it if you want to be a weird person. As a matter of fact, I can come up here and hit F2. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I can, but I'm not going to. These are B-52s. So they're, they're intended for a certain altitude. And let's see what they do to my poor city of Hartford one more time. Again, this is all a military operation. They're just planning in case, um, you know, Hartford to stand over our breaks off or something along those lines. All right, here they go. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Man, that is a lot smoother than it used to be in the old days. And now one of the things you'll notice, of course, is that when we head back over to the air tasking order, you'll see that they're um, basically still airborne, but in a bit, they're actually going to come back and uh, settle themselves back down to the ground. So we're going to speed up time here. I love this new double flame speed. Unfortunately, with the double flame speed, is if obviously something's being tracked or targeted or something like that, it's uh, got to slow things down a little bit. Magic of editing. Oh, they're coming in for landing. Sweet. So now when I bring up the air tasking order again, you'll notice the fact that uh, even though it lists them as airborne, uh, they're very much down onto the ground, which is, again, everything is going to update in cycles. It's not going to update continuously. That would be an absolute disaster. 
So as you can see, the air tasking order is a very useful tool for us. It's uh, basically going to enable us to be able to see a lot of things going on, to be able to organize everything. Another big thing that I hope everybody takes away here is using the task pools. If you have really, really, really large units like this, because it keeps everybody separate when you need them to be separate. Obviously, if I need a bunch of phantoms, no matter where they're coming from, all to strike the same target, you're not going to be using a task pool for that. You're just going to the old fashioned way kind of a thing. But as you can see, it's a very useful tool and it's gonna lead us into the flight plan editor, but uh, that's for another day because that gets a little involved. Enjoy.